So this is Stefan Mückstein from uh, Energy Lab. I'm quite excited uh, about this video. It's going to be the first one we'll, which we'll try on a video conference and then edit it and put it on the channel. Um, in today's video, uh, we'll look at a very special, very unique uh, mounting structure, uh, the mounting structure of uh, Helios Light. And for that purpose, we're being joined by Etienne, the CTO of Helios Light and Daniel Suviets, who is the CEO of uh, Anaware, one of the clients of Helios Light. Etienne, could you just briefly introduce yourself uh, and maybe explain a little bit about the background of uh, Helios Light? Yeah, absolutely. So our company Helios Light is uh, about seven years old now. So we develop disruptive PV trackers, which have been uh, really optimized to cut down the cost of uh, energy, but also to try to open new market applications. So our trackers have been installed in multiple market segments, uh, including projects from very, very small kilowatt scale isolated site to uh, megawatt scale industrial power plants, uh, mostly with uh, anywhere so far. So our company has in-house engineering team to develop uh, internally all the mechanical aspect, the control system, and all the software which is behind to have both control the trackers, but also to do monitoring of the plant. So these are things that we do uh, internally. We're able to really control all the parts uh, internally. And uh, today's in the very large uh, scale grid connected farms, single axis trackers are really dominating uh, this market segment and quickly uh, getting market shares because this system uh, tend to be more cost effective than a uh, fixed structure. But single axis trackers have their limitation. They have uh, an overall gain which is quite limited due to the uh, kinetic of these systems. So as you probably know, dual axis tracker can give you much higher energy gain, but these systems are typically too uh, complex and too uh, costly, so they are usually not cost effective. So with Helios Lite, we've developed a unique 1.5 axis tracker in order to try to bridge the gap between these two class of trackers. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Etienne. Uh, can, can you a little bit explain about uh, how that 1.5 axis tracker actually works? Sure, absolutely. Yes, this is no longer confidential information because uh, we've been happy to have uh, uh, an international patent which have been recently granted for this technology. And so we're able to talk about it now in uh, more details. And we have now a few hundreds of systems which are deployed in uh, many countries. So technically speaking, our 1.5 axis tracker is actually a dual axis tracker. We have two rotation axis. The primary axis is uh, an incline uh, axis oriented along the uh, north-south direction, which enable the panel uh, to be turned for, toward east or west to follow the course of the sun during the day. And what makes our tracker very special is the fact that the entire pole structure on the panel are able to uh, rotate back and forth around another secondary axis, which is oriented in the east-west direction. And uh, the two axes are mechanically coupled together using a pair of steering arm and we're using only one actuator to drive both axes at the same time. So this is the reason why we call it 1.5 axis because it's not really a dual axis, not really a single axis, but it gives you uh, a performance which is close to about 90% of the gain that you would get with a dual axis tracker, but at a cost which is much closer to a single axis tracker system. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Etienne. Uh, Daniel, uh, Anaware has used a wide range of mounting structures, um, especially for your off-grid clients. Initially, I remember uh, you used your own design, uh, but eventually you switched to solutions from external suppliers. I think this was largely due to a lack of uh, the right mounting structures being available and gradually the manufacturers produced mounting structure that suited you. Um, can you sort of uh, explain a little bit about that process? Sure, yeah. When we started out in 2012, when you Googled mobile solar, you'd get a few solar panels on a, on a trailer. That was pretty much all that was available in the market. And since we were targeting industrial scale power and uh, power for commercial industrial clients, uh, we had to build our own structure that was much larger, that was um, built for ultimately megawatt size deployments, but that could still be moved. That was truly unique. And we came up with our own um, ballasted uh, mounting structure designed for that. 
specifically for temporary off-grid power projects. Um, then as, as the market developed and as we grew, um, a lot of people were experimenting with mounting structures and in the end we found things that for various applications were better and were able to draw from a larger supply chain. So over the last uh, eight years, we've been using a mix of our own internally designed structures and external structures from a company like AeroCompact, for example, for rooftop structures and Helios Light for the trackers. Excellent. Um, why did you choose to use Helios Lite uh, 1.5 access trackers? Where do you see uh, their advantage over these other mounting structures? The real advantage of this kind of 1.5 access tracker is in the flat continuous power output that it provides. And to, to illustrate that, let me go to some of the very basic assumptions of the solar industry. In the past, when there was very little solar on any given grid, it was assumed that, and, and solar panel prices were high, the main objective of the solar industry was to produce the cheapest kilowatt hour. And little thought was given to when that kilowatt hour was produced, because look, any kilowatt hour would substitute coal, gas, or, or another form of fossil fuels. Um, in the mini grid market, in the off grid market, those assumptions don't hold anymore. We typically have fairly high solar shares in individual cases, up to 95% instantaneous solar and 60-70% and of the total energy consumption. And hence, you can't just assume that any additional solar kilowatt hour will replace uh, diesel in our cases, but you have to match that with a consumption profile. And um, so when, when you look at our grids, um, the first question is, is not what's the cheapest uh, way to produce solar energy, but how do we match the solar energy production with the client's requirement? And initially, that was quite easy. We went after camps, for example, and islands, um, and we had a staff camp on, on an island in Abu Dhabi, for example, where most of the energy is used for air conditioning. In that case, the July peak load of the camp is about five times more than the daytime uh, consumption in February. So with a conventional optimally tilted plant, you would, which is, which is kind of producing the maximum of the course of the year, you still wouldn't produce enough in summer and you would produce too much in winter. So in that case, you need to go to really low uh, tilt east-west solutions that maximize summer production and minimize overproduction in winter. And if you want to expand the shoulders, so basically produce more in the mornings and in the evenings, not just at noon, then you could switch to a horizontal single axis tracker, which has the same uh, seasonal production profile, a lot in summer and not a lot in winter, um, but a flatter production profile over the day. So this works well for air conditioning, uh, air conditioning loads. When you look at industrial loads though, and, and smaller projects, and smaller projects being anything under 10 megawatt, which is typically the minimum threshold for a horizontal single axis tracker because you drive piles and you, you build foundations. When you look at industrial projects, um, you typically don't have much of a seasonal variation because machinery, whether it's mining, oil and gas, all of those things run uh, at the same, have the same consumption in summer and in winter. And instead, it's really about how do you squeeze the maximum solar power into, into this production curve. And if you use an east-west structure for that, you would end up with three times as much production in summer as in winter, which really means you're burning uh, a lot more diesel in winter than, than you, we would like to. And for each of these cases, we run an optimization algorithm to maximize the area under the curve where we replace diesel with solar. And uh, the results are obviously hugely site dependent and load dependent, but but uh, for a mine or an oil and gas load, the optimal result is very close to what the Helios Light 1.5 access tracker produces. Excellent. Uh, again, again, where do you see your clients? Is it mainly residential, utility, uh, industrial clients? Yes, the initial application case is a very good one that uh, Daniel really mentioned because uh, in this case, our uh, 1.5 axis tracker cuts down seasonal variation by almost a factor of two compared to an east-west structure or a single axis tracker. And you get a very high gain during winter season where we've recorded typically gain exceeding 60% when you really need this extra energy to be able to compensate the fact that you have lower irradiance during uh, winter uh, season. 
And on average, for sites in the Emirates, we've seen gains which are close to around 31% uh, on the overall average uh, yearly gain for these systems, which is really good compared to single axis tracker, which are typically uh, peaking at about 20% for their maximum gain. Great. Um, before I ask the next question uh, to you guys, I would like to encourage also the viewers to add comments um, about their experience about mounting structures. Uh, if they have any questions regarding the Helios Lite uh, mounting structure, then uh, Helios Lite can also get back to you guys. But in general, if you have uh, you share your experience about mounting structures, that would be highly appreciated. Um, Etienne, I understand you went obviously also through an evolution uh, in, in developing this mounting structure. Initially, I understand it was also a dual access tracker and, and Anaware sort of helped in, uh, evol uh, in the evolution process. Um, can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Anywhere has really been a strategic partner uh, for us, and we have a very good relation, uh, working relation with them. And uh, we've uh, even incorporated some of their suggestions uh, into the latest design of our uh, trackers, as we've done through uh, multiple iterations of the design, and every time we're trying to refine uh, the product using basically customers' feedback. And since uh, Anywhere has been installing the system themselves, uh, we've been getting a lot of feedback from them. One example is, for example, the main beam, which was uh, designed to be a very lightweight uh, structure initially using a uh, cold wall uh, profile, which are assembled together with rivets. And on the latest version, uh, we decided to go with uh, a standard square profile like most of the single tracker are uh, doing, uh, because it's simple to produce locally. Uh, it's heavier. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you're paying about the same cost for it and you have uh, something which is much simpler uh, to install. So this is an interesting improvement that we've done through this uh, collaboration with uh, um, Anywhere. And I think it's what makes also our company special is since we're a very small company compared to most of the single axis tracker manufacturers, we're able to be very agile and uh, basically customize and adapt our product very easily to fit the, the customer uh, needs. And I think that's uh, what's very specific about uh, your site, this capability to uh, optimize the product. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Etienne. Thank you also, Daniel. We'll have uh, hopefully soon another call on next Helios Lite floating solar trackers. I understand you're working on that one currently. Um, if you enjoyed the video, to the viewers, uh, please like the video and subscribe to Energy Lab. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.